much. Okay, uh, Ms. Peterson, we have another one more park quest, parks question. There's often, often conflict in the city between those, those who believe PVE's urban forest of mature trees improves their property values and defines or contributes to neighborhood character, and those who believe that having a 180 degree unimpeded view is a right. Where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? Are you a tree person or a view person? <laughs> Can I be both? <laughs> <laughs> you can. <laughs> you know, I, I think trees actually add to the view. Um, 180 degrees of unimpeded ocean view is gorgeous, but I think having the trees in there makes it even more beautiful and more natural-like. Um, I think it really depends on the, the residents. You know, I, I'm not in your living room. I am not looking out at your view. I cannot decide what you would determine as more valuable. Um, and so, you know, a lot of these cases come up to the city council and we have to take it case by case. It's not, it's not one size fits all. Um, with that said, I know there's a couple of big trees in front of my big windows and, and I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay with having them there. And um, so, like I said, it's case by case. I can't say that I, I'm a tree or a view person. I think I'm both. Both. Trees are part of the view. So. Okay, thank you. Ms. Losey. So that's one of mine. Um, so for people who know me, I often say I think life is like a bell curve. And you have kind of the two extremes, but most of life happens in the middle. So you have the 180 degrees at all costs, and the tree should never be cut down. And then you, I think you have real life happens in the middle. And so I think you do. Um, the thing that I think you most need is, is um, you know, neighbors need to kind of work together respectfully and collaboratively. I think you have to come into that um, conversation, um, you know, willing to find a compromise. And I'd like to see that a little bit more. I think we have a, we've gotten to where people kind of go in expecting a battle, and I'd like to um, to find a way to. And I think the Parklands Committee tries to help find the middle. But, but, yep, I think you have the extremes. And then most of life is in the middle, and, and we have to find a way to, to get that to work for everyone. Mr. Camps. I think the other thing to add is it varies based on areas, right? So, you know, using Upper Lanada Bay, looking down at trees that are in your way of a wide expanse of open view, as opposed to, you know, Malaga Cove that maybe has fewer trees and impacts specific neighbors. I think the point about collaborating between neighbors is huge. Uh, I'll share our own story. Uh, we're remodeling a house on Via Del Monte. We move into the house. A couple people that are neighbors look at look at our lot and they look up and they say, what do you think of that eucalyptus tree? And my wife and I look up and say, we love that tree, right? So everyone has different views. Um, and I think we need to collaborate as neighbors and, and be willing to uh, cut where people in front or behind us um, have view impacts. And we did that as good neighbors. And I, you know, I think we can all get along and, and not have battles over it. We have enough to battle. Okay. Uh, Ms. King. I do think it's all about balance. I'm a tree person and a view person, and um, I, our, our system is a little complicated by the fact that there are two bodies that control trees and views. So we have the city process with the Parklands Committee for our public trees, and I think actually that process works really well. Um, I've listened to several of the Parklands hearings, and people are, are really able to balance the trees and views, whereas private trees do go through the Homes Association, and so that's an entirely different process. I think that um, trees and views, it is part about being neighbors and appreciating the interests of our neighbors and really just being more neighborly. And I think a lot of our issues um, would be minimized if we were just all a little bit more neighborly. Thank you. Mr. McGowan. Well, I also agree with the balance between the trees and the, uh, and the views. But I do know that in a lot of, in the area of uh, Lanata Bay where I live, uh, more and more uh, buildings or remodels have been done where the foliage has been limited to the ridge line of the house, which I think has been a big asset in maintaining some of the views and yet, yet having the balance of the trees. There's one specific species in our neighborhood that is uh, very much of a concern to me, and that's the canary pines, because they grow so uh, doggone tall, and if they fall, they're going to take out some uh, homes, uh, as well as they already obstruct a lot of the views. And I think that this is something that we, at some point in time, need to consider. Thank you. Mr. McCarthy. I agree <clears throat> with my colleagues. There's a balance, uh, depending on where you live. 
Uh, I have trees in my backyard and I love looking at the trees, but if I climb on my roof, I can peek through the trees and see the ocean. So it, <laughs> it's a little bit of both worlds. Um, but if it's really about the neighbors and it's really about getting along, and I like uh, Dave's suggestion about maybe limiting the kind of trees mm -hmm. or at least keeping them trimmed to a certain height because some of those pines, uh, those, those go up forever. It's like a, a, a tall building about, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr.